Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie. I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas despite it being very much different to the one that you probably had planned. Um, I'm here today because I would like to tell you about the sewing and craft related gifts that I was lucky enough to receive this Christmas from my wonderful friends and family. I by no means wish to show off in this video, I simply know that I would be really interested to hear about the sewing gifts that you guys received this Christmas, so I imagine that you will also be interested to see the sewing gifts that I received too. So, let's get started. I'm going to show you probably the biggest and most exciting one to start with. Um, and this actually, I will admit, is not sewing related. I have an ambition for 2021 to become somewhat of a knitter. I have learned to knit in the past. My great nanny as a child taught me how to knit and I could, I could do, you know, knit and purl stitch and I made a few scarves but that's as far as my knitting ever went. So I've decided to kind of jump in the deep end a little bit and I've been given a kit to make a jumper. I know a jumper I probably should start with a few more scarves, a woolly hat maybe, but I'm not excited to knit a scarf or a hat. I really want to knit jumpers so yeah, jumping in with the deep end, and my lovely parents have bought me a sewing kit from We Are Knitters, and it's a kit to make the orchard sweater. It's ranked as an easy pattern, so it's level easy. They do also have, oh, sorry, this is making noises, that's probably really annoying. They also have some, I think it's absolute beginner patterns, which again, probably would have been slightly better for me based on my very minimal knitting experience. But I really wanna make this jumper. So if I hold it up, you can hopefully see what the jumper looks like. So yeah, it's a very simple jumper. It's got quite a nice high neck, which I like, cause I like to go to wear any sort of long sleeve t-shirt underneath without having the neckline showing and it's fairly sort of cropped in length, quite boxy, and it looks like the sleeves have got a little bit of volume to them. The yarn that I chose, we do Christmas lists in my family by the way, so that's why my parents would have known exactly which kind of style and colour that I was hoping to receive. Um, I chose this, oh my goodness, just look at the colour of this. It is just absolutely delicious. So this is the We Are Knitters um, cotton. It's 100% Peruvian Pima cotton yarn. And the color is in olive. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And these kits, I mean, they're, they're not cheap, hence why I hadn't treated one I had treated myself to one in the past, but you get everything inside this lovely big brown paper bag that you need to make the kit. So I've got six skeins. Is it pronounced pronounced a skein? A skein of yarn? Learning all the knitting lingo. So I've got six of these. Two. Three. Oh no, sorry, five, not six, five. Got five of those, and then it comes with knitting needles. So these are the knitting needles. Um, these are length 37 centimeters. They're five millimeter needles, UK size six. This is all new to me, but anyway, I've got these nice wooden knitting needles, so I can slowly start a collection of knitting needles. Um, and then it has this envelope that had um, what was in here. Oh yeah, some stickers that I thought were very sweet. And a few extra bits. So you've got the needles that you'll need to, or that I will need to finish off. I don't know yet what I'll be using those for, but I'll find out. And also, I thought this was so sweet. There's, um, it comes with like a label for you to sew into the back of it. Um, that you can sew into the back of the jumper when it's finished. And then, of course, you get the pattern. So this is the pattern booklet. Never used a knitting sewing pattern before, but I've had a quick look and yeah, it look, I think I'll definitely be using some of their tutorials on the We Are Knitters website to help me and a bit of YouTube, obviously, because there's always loads of good tutorials on YouTube. Um, I don't even know how to cast on, so I'll be YouTubing that because I've done it in the past, but can't remember. So that's 
that. I know that not everybody in the dressmaking community is interested in knitting and vice versa, but if any of you are also interested in knitting and if you know of any really good beginner knitting resources, let me know, because yeah, I'm learning pretty much from scratch. The next thing that I received is this giant tube, which is very long, and this is tracing paper. So I've almost run out of the tracing paper that I use. I use quite a lot of tracing paper with my dressmaking because I trace all of my patterns. I don't ever cut patterns anymore because I want to be able to use them again in the future if I change size or if I want to sew them for somebody else. I do a lot of um, sort of hacking and pattern adjustments now so I want to leave the original pattern pieces as they are. So I get through quite a bit of this and this stuff, I'll link it below, it's from Amazon and I for me it's my perfect tracing paper because look it's really wide so it's great for tracing off patterns and it's let me get a piece out and show you oh it's a big a big heavy roll so it's it's opaque enough to be really good to trace with but it's quite sturdy like it, it's not it's much more um, heavy duty than um, tissue paper and I just really enjoy using it. I received a Fiskars Functional Form Clip Sharp Scissors Sharpener, which looks like this. My dressmaking scissors are quite blunt and I've never really known how to sharpen them before. I'm sure you don't necessarily need a specialist scissor sharpening tool, you could probably use like a knife sharpener but I'm not really sure, I don't want to mess up my dressmaking scissors, but now I've got this little gadget, which looks like this, and it means you can basically poke your scissors into these holes and it um, sharpens them, so that's great. I'm looking forward to having nice sharp scissors to start 2021 sewing with. I have finally got my hands on some of these. These were in my stocking this year, and these are the Pilot Frickson Ballpoint erasable pens. Now it was quite hard sort of double checking which exact ones I should get but I did a bit of hunting in the sewing community to make sure these were the right ones which I haven't tested them yet but I'm pretty sure they're the right ones. These pens are erasable as in they have a little rubber bit on the end that allows you to rub out the pens. That's not what I'm interested in. It is apparently a complete coincidence that these pens are perfect for the sewing community because they are heat erasable. They're not designed to be for, for home sewists or sewists, it's just a happy coincidence I think, but that apparently you can draw, you can mark your fabric with these pens and then when you put your iron on it um, the markings disappear. I've been struggling with chalk for my whole dressmaking journey really. I've been sewing for um, about four years now and I've never got on with chalk. I find it really imprecise and I'm hoping that these pens will allow me to be much more precise when I'm marking my darts and everything else on my fabrics. I'll let you know how I get on with them. The next thing I have to show you is very fancy. It is from William G and it is a Taylor's Clapper. Now, I mean, it looks just gorgeous. This is what it looks like. It's in the most beautiful solid wood and yeah, it's a Taylor's Clapper. I started to make my first coat two years ago, approximately, and I still haven't finished it because I just got a bit disheartened halfway through. I made quite a big mistake. I put the zipping upside down and I've, I'm making it in a beautiful sort of tweed fabric that's gorgeous but it's really hard to unpick because the stitches have kind of disappeared into the fabric, blah blah blah. Anyway, having a tailor's clapper I, I decided would be the perfect way to reinvigorate my motivation to finish this coat. <laughs> and if you, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm reading off the William G website right now so I don't tell you the wrong information. But the, the hardwood tailor's pressing clapper is a fantastic tool to press perfect creases, flatten bulky facing, facings and create crisp seams and creases while sewing. Um, so how do tailor's clappers work? The wood itself absorbs the steam and traps the heat inside of your fabric instead of setting it free into the air of your sewing room. This is the magic of the tailor's clapper. Your fabric needs the right combination of hot to cool, steamy to dry in order to make a perfectly flat seam. So this, these apparent, I mean you could use these 
for pressing any seams but apparently these are particularly useful when you're using kind of bulky wools and bouncy fabrics that you might use for coat making or in sort of tailoring jackets and things. So this is hopefully going to give me some lovely crisp seams on my coat when I finally finish it in 2021. Fingers crossed. A great little stocking filler was a set of spare rotary cutter blades. I try my best to make my rotary cutter blades last as long as possible because I actually have a um, rotary blade sharpener tool that I think I got maybe last Christmas actually or maybe the Christmas before. Um, but yeah, I need new ones. Mine are a bit blunt despite sharpening. So those are always a really useful thing to pop on your Christmas list because they make a, yeah, a great little stocking filler. This next one I've been really excited about for a really long time and I've considered buying it myself multiple times but it comes all the way from Canada and I just always couldn't be bothered with the palaver of, of, of that really, of ordering something that's coming all the way from Canada. But Father Christmas um, was very wonderful for me this year and made it happen. But this is, oh you're not going to be able to see it very well, I'll put some images on the screen so you know what it looks like. But this is the Geordie Bralet Kit by um, Erin, hang on let me check her Etsy shop name because otherwise I'm going to get it wrong. So it's Emerald Erin Bra Shop on Etsy. She also has a fantastic Instagram page where she talks about her lingerie journey or her business. Um, and yes, yeah, she has these bra making kits. I've been really wanting to get into making bras for a year, more than a year. I think it was probably one of my sewing resolutions for 2020 was to make a bra. But I just haven't known where to start. I haven't felt like I needed to go to a class. I mean, firstly, going to classes has obviously been very different, difficult in 2020. But I didn't feel like I needed to go to a class because I don't particularly want to learn to make underwired bras, which I think is where I'd really need some extra help and guidance with. Um, I've got a small bust. I don't need a really, like, supportive, hefty bra, and I enjoy wearing bralettes. So I thought I don't need a class for that, but the thing I found such a huge hurdle with trying to do that, get started with making some bralettes, is buying all the materials. There are quite a few patterns online for making bras and bralettes, um, and the Geordie Bralette by um, Emerald Erin is a, a great one, that's where I've decided to start. But I have just haven't known where to buy all of the bits and bobs that you need for bra making. You need multiple different types of elastic, you need the sort of bra hooks and eyes and just all the different materials. I just didn't know where to get them. I wanted to find somewhere where I could buy everything from one online shop, but that didn't seem to be possible or I was looking in the wrong place. And if you end up ordering all your materials from different shops, you've spent a small fortune on postage by the time you've ordered everything. So every time I've tried, I've just given up. But I've now got the Geordie Bralette kit. So this little kit should have everything in it that I need. So I'm gonna open it up and show you. Okay, so I've got the fabric, which is a black mesh. I'll put the links to this stuff in the description below because I'm probably not gonna use the right terminology because I'm not used to working with these fabrics. So this is the fabric. And then in here, this is the pack of goodies that I just couldn't face sourcing myself. Okay, so I've got what looks like three different types of elastic. One of them looks like it's fold over elastic. One of them looks like it's normal elastic and one of them looks like it's a thicker elastic which I imagine is for the band that goes under the bust but I will find out when I sew it all together and then there's one final cute little paper bag that has got the fastenings in Ooh. so I've got the the bra clasp and then the little hooks and things that you need, although you're not going to be able to see those very well, but it's the little hooks that you need for the straps. So I've now got everything I need, this is just so great! While we are on the topic of bra making, I'm actually going to divert very quickly away from my Christmas gifts to tell you about a, well, I guess it's a Christmas present to myself. So just before Christmas, the New Craft House, which is a fabric shop in London that specialises in dead stock fabrics and ex-designer stuff, 
they launched a collection of bra making fabrics and I just couldn't resist because again I've said to you guys just now that I just don't really know where to source good uh, bra making materials from. So I did a bit of a panic shop because the, the new craft house stuff often sells out really quickly because they launch their stuff in these collections that are always themed, like their themed collection. And I was just so worried it was all gonna sell out. So I just kind of panicked and bought some stuff. I mean, look at these. Oh, I'll have to put, I'll hold them all up in a minute, but just these colors. <gasps> so basically I got myself three different fabrics so there's this gorgeous green lace which is just I mean such a lovely rich green color and then I also got two of these mesh fabrics so this one is in it's kind of a gray I guess but I kind of in my head I thought that it would actually look quite nice with this green as well as with this blue mesh so I kind of thought that these three colors could potentially all mix and match quite nicely together, whether I end up making bras or knickers or whatever. And then I got two different types of elastic. Again, I, I was kind of winging it. I didn't really know what I was going to need, but they had this olive green um, fold over a velvet elastic. I mean, how gorgeous, particularly with the green and with the gray. I just think it's going to be super nice. And then this I think is Pico elastic in this royal blue, which, prob which goes probably go best with the navy, but again, I can kind of have some fun. Um, so yeah, again, I kind of feel like I've now got all the gear and no idea, because I've got this selection of gorgeous bra and um, underwear making fabrics. Don't really know what I'm supposed to do with them, but I'm gonna figure that out once I've made my first Geordie bralette with my Geordie bralette kit from Emerald Erin Sews. Another gift that I was given from my lovely parents was an embroidery kit, which again is something that I had um, let them know that I was hoping to get, and it's from Etsy, so I'll link it below, and um, it kind of it came like this, so you've got an embroidery hoop. The only thing I would say that's a bit of a shame is that this embroidery hoop is plastic as opposed to a wooden one, so if I'd realised that I probably would have tried to source one to put on my list that was wooden, not plastic, but never mind. Um, and then this is the instructions that you get, it's all in a little envelope, and um, yeah, it's got obviously the instructions and the embroidery silks inside and a piece of calico, let me show you. So if I open it up, it's got the calico in here, and then all of the threads are folded up beautifully inside. And it looks like it's already got the pattern of the design on the calico, and it's also got a, need, a couple of needles attached to the calico too. So I was inspired to get into embroidery earlier this year because I have been lucky enough to have been given a huge selection of embroidery threads, which have, um, were given to me from my nanny. And um, yeah, I just don't know what to do with them. I've actually had them for years because when I was a child, my nanny one Christmas gave me her mother, so my, we called her grandma, but she was my great grandmother's sewing box. And she kind of kitted it out for me. I must have been about 12, I'm not really sure. I was quite, I can't remember. But anyway, she gave me this beautiful selection of embroidery silks. And I've never used them because I've never learned to embroider. I haven't known what to do with them. So I didn't really need to be given the silks as part of the kit, but I just thought to do a kit would be a great place to start. Um, and I chose this kind of floral designed one because it seemed like it would teach me quite a few different stitches. So the idea, I mean, I've seen people like Elisa Lex on Instagram do the most beautiful embroidered details on like the necklines of dresses and things. So I'm thinking in the long run, if I can kind of learn some of the basic stitches, um, you know, maybe in the future I can embroider onto clothes. That's kind of the plan, but I thought this would be a good place to start. Last but by no means least is a present bought for me by my lovely husband and he has bought me a year subscription to Vogue magazine. Now I love flicking through fashion magazines to get inspiration for my dressmaking projects and just generally to kind of daydream and look at the gorgeous clothes and I think Vogue in particular is lovely to look at because it obviously features some really top 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 designers and I just daydream to myself and think wow 
like imagine how it was made, imagine who the seamstresses were and the pattern cutters and you know all these gorgeous kind of beaded and embellished fabrics etc. Yeah it's a real big source of inspiration for me, not that I claim to make anything that would be worthy of featuring in Vogue magazine but you know one day it's yeah a great source of inspiration. So there you have it, those are all the sewing and craft related gifts that I received this year. I feel so so lucky, um, yeah I obviously received a huge amount of really lovely beautiful thoughtful gifts from my friends and family and it, my Christmas presents under the tree were heavily sewing influenced this year which is great. Um, yeah I would love to know um, if you have any thoughts or comments in the comments below. What did you guys get for Christmas? Did you get any fabrics or sewing patterns or sewing tools, sewing accessories? I'd love to hear from you and yeah subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and I'll see you next time. Bye!